Watch it live. That's right. We'll do it live. <laughs> I I hit the record button. If you're watching on the YouTubes, uh, you heard Lou say doing it live, but you missed the whole spiel. Lou gave a, a rather lengthy dissertation on the the jujitsu strategy of Donald Trump. And I'm not going to go into it. You would have had to have seen us on the Liberty Principle Facebook page, which is linked in the YouTube comments below. So you want to like that page and watch us when we're on live Thursday nights at 9 p.m. God's time, which is, of course, Eastern Standard Time. So we got a great show lined up, don't you, don't you think, Lou, since you've uh, poured over I the think, notes? and you? I think it's going to be a very special slice of... <laughs> Of a great show. Coming up tonight on a very special Is Daily Thursday. Lou Sander learns what it means to hurt when someone touches him in a bad place. <laughs> oh, bad touch, bad touch. <laughs> yeah. So I, I say we dive right in. Are you ready to dive in? I'm let's I, dive. I'm I'm gonna go right to uh I'm going to go right to the shorter leash. Prepare yourselves. This is the painful part of the show. Our course of association shortening the leash on their pets. We cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in shortening the leash on those they presume to rule. Welcome to a shorter leash. Yeah, this is the sucky part of the show, but it's necessary. It's kind of like just to give you a feel for what your reality is really like. The kind of part of the reality that, that, that Lou and I understand all too well. And maybe you do to some degree. Maybe you don't. Do you, do you have the first story open there? Do you see it? Uh, let's see now. Le, is that the proper spelling? I don't know. Le, Le Pan, Le Pan. The, Le Pan. Br the bread charged for posting unfavorable <laughs> tweet about ISIS. It's the uh, what Marie Le Pan charged for posting an unfavorable tweet uh, about ISIS. So apparently, I I, I, I hate to be a, a grammar Nazi when it that, comes to French, but <laughs> yeah, the, the French don't like when the Nazis go in there and correct them. But I think that's oh, the spelled I, it's, it's L E P E N. It's yeah, not Le Pen, it, it, it's E N. <laughs> but you yeah, know what? Because Let's leave it to Le, the bread. Le Pen would probably be like some sort of baguette. I like it. I like it. I think it's funny, and I think it helps us digest the story a little bit easier. Although I don't know, I, I kind of have mixed a mixed bag about this story because Marie Le Pen, she's a bit of a nationalist kind of uh, Trumpian kind of nationalist kind of gal. So, I mean, it couldn't happen to a nicer lady. I, I'll I'll just I'll just put it to you this way. So, apparently, it is illegal to show the brutality of ISIS. ISIL, Daesh, whatever the heck you want to call them. It's, it's, it's apparently illegal to show that brutality. Even if you were a previous major candidate for prime minister in France. So, um, I, 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 what's essentially happened is they're opening up, they're charging Marie Le Pen with some sort of French hate crime, social media hate crime. And there's, uh, an investigation going on because Marie Le Pen showed this photo of a journalist that had been killed by Daesh ISIS. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's coming to America, I think. What do you think? Am I am I being alarmist or is that is that in the mail? Hmm. So is this like the news is hate speech? Yeah. It's it's kinda like that. Now, what I found fascinating was the writer of this article, this journalist. What's this journalist's name? I thought I included the name of the journalist in here. Oh. You did. Uh, where is where it? Where is I, it? Where I, I, just, is... I just looked at it. Oh, David uh, Shazan. 
David Chazan. So there's David Chazan, and he's a journalist, and he's writing a story about somebody sharing a news item. I don't really care why they shared it, but they shared a news item, and for that, they're being censored. And it's not just anyone being censored. It's a former prime minister candidate. Not that I think that they have special rights. I'm just saying it's, it's sending a strong message to everybody else. Look, man, we're going after a former prime minister candidate. Don't think we're not going after you. And this guy, when you read the article, his tone is basically every... He, he works to put Le Pen in the worst light possible. There's very little commentary, very little to say about the fact that she's being censored. She's being charged with this what this French hate crime thingy for posting this article. It's 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 kind of weird to see a journalist not recognize that his very livelihood is kind of in danger. Yeah, this gives me the sads because a lot of soldiers fought for the right of a free <laughs> press and for free speech. And I have... From, from the Constitution, uh, Article 67, this is Chapter 5, Article 67. Citizens are guaranteed freedom of speech, of the press, of assembly, demonstration, and association. Not only is it just, not only is it just, not only are they guaranteed these freedoms, but the state shall guarantee conditions for the free activity of democratic political parties and social organizations. So it's, it, it actually is a right in in the same regard that people believe that health care is a right. And I, I, I can't believe that these people would would just urinate away their their hard fought uh, rights because the, the the soldiers that fought to defend this constitution of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, you know, it's they're ju they're just urinating all over all their graves. So what you're saying is that there's words on paper that should have prevented this from happening. Yes, it's the North Korean Constitution, Chapter 5, Article 67. And, and if the North Korean Constitution recognizes the fundamental right of the free press, then who are the French to deny it? Unless, of course, exactly. they're more exactly. North Korean than the North Koreans. I mean, the North Koreans recognize it. How do, how do they not? How does this British writer not recognize it? How does this British writer? It's it's because Marie Le Pen is, well, I mean, she's, I don't know what you know about her. You know anything about her? Not a whole heck of a lot. Well, she's a, a nationalistic type of uh, a That's person, why I don't know much about her. <laughs> she... She uh, made it to the final round of, uh, uh, I guess, what would have been their version of, uh, what's that Fox Survivor? singing show? No, that Fox singing show. Oh, American Idol? Yeah. She made it to the to the or final America's round of talent. French Idol. Or Dancing yeah. with the Stars. I don't know. Yeah, French Idol. So instead of yeah. picking a singer, they picked a leader. You know. <laughs> so she made it to the final round. Leader. Leader, right. She made it to the final round. She surprised everyone. And she had a very nationalistic agenda. I, I mean, of course, she was running up against an overt socialist, uh, a little surrender monkey boy. Uh, his terrible Macron is a, 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 a horrible human being. But he's the right kind of horrible human being, I guess. And if you're going to target someone for censorship, hey, as long as it's not one of our guys, I guess it's okay. But you kind of don't realize that it's coming. Like the thing that, you know, the, the old story, you know, be, be careful the beast that you feed because the beast will turn back on you. That's, that's kind of what I'm, how I'm viewing this guy, David. And this is kind of the underlying theme that we're going to get to in the I ponder, sec, ponder section. It's, uh, it's really how so many news reporters, especially folks that are writing I, I don't I, I, I don't have much to say about the opinion writers. Yeah, of course, they're going to write opinion. Go to iState.TV. iState.TV, it's all about opinion. I'm not writing straight news, not pretending it's straight news. But it's the folks that, oh, what is this comment here? 
It's the folks that are trying to come off like they're writing straight news. Those those folks, man, they're the real devilish ones, subjectively so, the devilish ones, the ones that are they're sneaking stuff in. And and this guy is kind of sneaking stuff in in his article, which he he's totally silent. He doesn't even question why would the French do this? He comes up with excuses why it is that they're justified in doing this. So I don't know. I think I have I think I've said anything. I don't I don't I don't think I have anything more to say about this. So my understanding is this, this journalist uh, released a statement where he says, "Take away my rice, take them all, all of them, every last one of them, take them, take them now." Yep, for the I good of the whole. I, I don't need free speech. The government can tell me what to write, especially if I write something bad about them. Well, the cool thing is, right now I'm pretty sure that everything I'm writing is totally aligned with the government, so I'm safe. And I'm pretty sure the government's always going to stay this way, and it's always going to be these people in power. So I can go ahead and give them these powers, because you know nobody's ever going to come along and use these powers against me, ever. Because governments I think you're pretty safe. just stay the same. <laughs> I think you're pretty I, safe. I, I, I think you are very safe. I mean, yeah, sure. Occasionally the politician changes, but everything ultimately stays the same. Well, no, they don't stay the same. I mean, I know you're being facetious, but they don't. The well, fundamental the, the, principles at play don't change. But but the winners and losers, they do change. Are, are, is it your camp that's in power, the one that can give you the benefits, that can give you the jobs, that can give you the tax cuts? I mean, yeah, that that's because real change. Because, because it's more important to have one New York liberal, lifelong Democrat in putting 25% tariffs on you and, and, and raising other taxes and, and, and banning guns and all that sort of stuff than to have the other Wait a second. New York liberal, I, lifelong Democrat. I fell asleep before the election. I thought for sure Hillary was going to win. I guess I was right. I think Hillary she won. did. Hillary won. Yeah. Hillary won, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Hillary won. Yeah. So, Paul Sin, if you're, listening, if you're watching right now, I think you are. There needs to be a like four or five panel meme where Trump morphs into Hillary. You know which one I'm talking about. Because we've seen that for Bush and Obama and everything else, but that needs to happen. It, 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 there needs to be the the metamorphosis of Trump turning into Hillary. Because I haven't seen that one yet. I, I I've seen plenty of stuff with the hashtag "Orange is the New Black" and calling him "Orange Obama." You know, uh, but they they should we, have a Trumpery. We, we need that morphing. They we, should have we, a Trumpery. Yeah, we need that morphing going on. So, oh my! Oh my! Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. I have a moment, a moment that I want to share with everyone. And let me go get this. This is spontaneous. I haven't thought about this. This. Oh, man. I hope I have this. This is my daughter. Did I play this for you, Lou? Did I play Maybe. you for you? My daughter's beautiful uh, video on it was uh president's day where is it Come oh on. i've seen that i've it's, seen that i was subscribed to your daughter's youtube channel before i subscribed to yours why she is better because well not only that but uh uh you put out a post that says please subscribe to my daughter's channel and i'm like okay i've met bug i will do that and i she subscribed is. and and you would never you had never really asked me to subscribe to your channel before I actually have probably tried to promote her her channel more than I have my own channel. I think she's awesome. I love her videos. She's Polaroid Kins, by the way. Uh, it's about K-I-N-Z, Polaroid, and then Kins. And I can't find her freaking video. Where is her president's video? This is this is disconcerting. Oh well, I I can't share it. Oh man. Uh, you know what? Hold on. I think I know what I'm doing wrong here. I'm looking through the video. This is worth it, folks. This is absolutely worth it. If if I don't get to it, then you get the you get to hear the entertainment value of me stumbling through and being lost. I know 
a number of you are probably very happy to hear me being lost. And where is it? Come on. I'm looking for President's Day. Come on. Give me President's Day. I can't find it. Oh, did she delete it? I hope she didn't delete President's Day. It was my my favorite. Oh, there it is. Hold on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me see. I think I have a YouTube uh, a YouTube scene here. Oh, please. Uh, this is. Are you, you going to broadcast this? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, good. Um, uh, man, I don't have it. I don't have a YTube set up for this. Bummer. Let me. I can't link do it, it on the, the fly. Show Bummer. Notes. Link, I'll link, link it, it in the, the show, show notes. notes. I'm sorry, folks. I don't have a YouTube set up in my OBS, so I can't do it. But I'm going to link it right here. And uh, good. Paul said consider it done. And there you go. That Thank this you, is. Paul. I think this is probably the greatest video of all time. When I saw this video by my daughter, I thought to myself, why? Why do I make videos? <laughs> Why bother? I'm never going to equal that. <laughs> never, <laughs> ever going to measure up to that. So let's go to, let's, let's extend the leash a little. What do you say? Let's, let's stretch our legs out. Let's uh, get a little breathing space between us and the course of enterprise. It's going to work out. What do you say? Let, let's get a little more permission. Yeah, let's get a little more permission. Here we go. How are coercive associations lengthening the leash on their pets? We cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in lengthening the leash on those they presume to rule. Yes, this is a family show because that was my wife. She does the voiceovers. My wife, my daughter does the voiceovers. My daughter does the best videos. This is a family show. So this video, you have, or this story, you have this up. It's uh, California's gun confiscation unit struggles to meet orders. Now, I know what you're thinking, Lou. You're probably wait, wait. thinking this. L l l let me just say it real quick. You want? I, I bet you don't know what. I bet you don't really know what I'm thinking. I believe that right now you're thinking. Man, I ate too many beans. I don't know if I could hold this in. I hope that it, when it comes out, nobody hears it. Is that it? Did I, did I nail no. it? <laughs> Am no. I close? Nope. 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 Oh, I know what you're thinking. My thoughts on this entire uh, situation here, this article, I can summarize it in two words. Are you ready? Are you, you going to crash the whole segment and we're done with it? No. Oh, okay, go ahead. My two words are, <laughs> that's actually <laughs> I almost a little bit out of my nose I was drinking actually I was drinking I was watching you, I was watching you drink oh, you, you timed it didn't you as I was taking yeah. the sip you're like oh, oh, oh I'm going to yeah. get I'm going to get nose splooge uh, if, so, you, if, if you had if you had root beer it would have been flying all, all through your nose everything right but I have uh, this is a sponsor of the show. Not a real sponsor. Uh, Java Munster sponsoring the show. Not a real sponsor. And I was sipping it just, oh man, I don't have anything funny I could say right then there, right as you were. You, what are you drinking? Don't Bible worry. Like? Coffee. You never have anything funny to say, whether I'm that, drinking or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When I Hello. try to say something that I was good, but when I try to say something serious, it kind of turns out to be funny. Not, not intentionally. Me, hashtag me too. Hashtag me too. So uh, why would I put this story? Maybe you can figure it out. Why would I put this story in a longer leash story when this is an example of government actually trying to shorten the leash? Uh, would it be because just like everything else, it's ultimately failing? Yeah. It's, 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 you know, on one hand, it's scary. You know, you know, all those folks are like, they're not going to confiscate our guns. We're not trying to confiscate your guns. Oh, by the way, California has a special task force completely Turn them devoted. In. Turn them in. Turn them in. Turn them in. Uh, you know, they're not, they're not going to all the, the doors, knocking on all the doors. They're just knocking on a, on a, on a few selective doors. They're getting used to the idea of door knocking and gun taking. It's uh it's a gradual process. So, uh, 
They set up this special task force, which was created to target and seize guns from people that have, quote, lost, unquote, their Second Amendment, quote, privileges, one, unquote, uh, for you one mean, reason or another. What do, you, what do you mean by lost? Did, and privileges. Did, did their privileges sink to the bottom of the lake in a voting accident? <laughs> oh, not one voting accident. There were a series of voting <laughs> accidents in California. Some of them were actually by the California voters themselves in little direct democracy. Little direct democracy at action in California. But most of it was a bunch of legislators that got together and said, dude, wouldn't it be cool if we could, like, you know, write laws that could tell millions of people how to live their lives yeah let's what part of their lives should we focus on today how about how about self-defense yes let's totally screw their day and by the way let's write in the exceptions for ourselves which of course they did but what's happened with this uh special task force is they're running a bit ragged so and this is this is from the washington post by the way that is one of those publication names when you hear it you should probably hiss, at least on the inside. A dozen years ago, the state set up a database that flags law enforcement officials when a registered gun owner is convicted of a felony. They get to define what the felonies are. It's not always what you think when you think of felony. But anyway, deemed mentally ill, they get to define what uh, mentally ill means, and it's not always what you think it is, has received a restraining order with no due process including in that, and, or committed one of about 37, and, and this is their phrase, qualifying misdemeanors. So the list is known as the Armed Prohibition Persons System. And and while it is well, I'm not going to read that part. Uh, the, it they they they're they're citing well, it didn't predict any mass shootings, but it has taken tens of thousands of guns out of the hands of people prohibited from having them. So uh, the problem is, <laughs> as they said, is the, the the work of Richardson's agents is overwhelming with the number of guns and quote unquote prohibited Hillary described the, the deplorables they're describing the prohibited and believe you me if you're not on that list it's just a matter of time uh, so with a number of guns and prohibited growing faster than the under-resourced teams can take them off the streets yeah and, they point out, so is the ingenuity of those selling guns and those making guns and those owning guns, legally or not. In other words, they, they can only selectively enforce their own laws. That's, that's why this is in the longer leash. And like you said, really, at the end of the day, this really comes down to two words. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly it. enough, uh, I, I saw an article. I don't remember all the details for it, but uh, one of the one of the gun grabbiest gun grabber uh, state senators in California, uh, he got arrested and charged with trafficking and firearms. Uh, I believe his name was Leland Yi. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, and I, I don't know if, I don't know if his trial started, I don't know if he's been convicted and sentenced or anything like that, but, uh, his name just popped up recently and that was a story that was covered on the freedom feeds a few years ago. And, uh, I, I, I think the, I think the meme that I made for it was because he is a gun grabber and a, a prohibitionist. The, uh, the title was no guns for thee unless you get them from ye. <laughs> I didn't get that at first. Oh, yee! Oh, I get it. Yeah. Well, you know, this is, I think I think you said this recently. Was it you or somebody else? I was listening to a Freedom Fiends episode recently. It was me. Recently. I don't know. <laughs> if it was good, it was you. <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't, it was Jeremy. Jeremy Hanger. So who said what? Uh, this is like the, uh, finding the, uh, you know, the, the Christian conservative who rails against homosexuality and is found in a bathhouse. 
<laughs> that was probably me. Well, that that could have been Jeremy Hamburg were too. That could have been Mr. Hangalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal
uh, I the the number of children that would even even if the parent is being completely reasonable, the number of children that would do what you just described is probably such a minuscule segment of the population that is not even worth mentioning. Now, if yeah. you have a child, if now if you have a child that's intentionally acting out and being as you just described. You have to ask why that's happening. And I would be willing to bet dollars to donuts that on most occasions, the parents are actually inviting it by doing dumb shit. Or whatever caregiver uh, the, the kid is around. It's it's almost, I won't, I won't, I don't know this for sure because I don't know enough about it, but I will strongly suspect that it's almost always the the way that the kid is treated. I'm sure there are some exceptions, but by and large, they're probably growing up in an environment where they're totally ignored, and the only time time they get attention is when they do something bad, and then they get their head ripped off, metaphorically and or otherwise, and so they, they begin to be conditioned to act out because they get yeah. a reward. I yeah, I mean, a, a, a really good example of that is you have a parent that the, the child never does good enough. If if the child gets a, a, a B plus, then the, the question was, oh, well, that's good. Why didn't you get an A? Or if, you, if the child gets an A minus, why didn't you get an A or an A plus? Why didn't you work a little bit harder to get that? And when, when this is such a consistent thing that a child expects to be um, not given congratulations or, or – uh, positive feedback on the accomplishment of getting accomplishment of getting a B plus or or even an A minus or if they uh, if they're constantly belittled you know that uh, example hey you did this wrong again what's the matter with you I mean, after after a certain amount of time their behavior is going to reflect the expectation of ridicule and condemnation and they're not even going to try they're 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 actually going to screw it up because they figure they're gonna they're gonna get um, they're gonna get crap either way. Yeah. So, I mean, the now, bottom they, line is, it's kind of like you know, with the you know, if you condition a dog to be a fighter, the dog is going to be a fighter. Yeah. And it's not it's not the dog wasn't born that way. You you made him that way. And most of these kids, when they act so out of I guess I'll say when they when they act in such a way that it's difficult for them to even function in society, usually it's because they're living in an environment in which their parents and or caregiver are fundamentally unable to function in society. And they create rules of engagement that are not tenable out in the real world. Right, um, I, I have another mental illness that was uh, that's a favorite of mine. You do and have a lot one, of mental illnesses. I agree with. Yes, that. it's it's one of the precursors to oppositional defiant disorder. Uh, it's called drapetomania. Uh, drapetomania was a conjectural illness that, in 1851, American physician Samuel A. Cartwright hypothesized as the cause of black slaves fleeing captivity captivity oh, has yeah. since been debunked as pseudoscience and part of the edifice of scientific racism uh, the description in diseases and peculiarities of the negro race cartwright points out that the bible calls for a slave to be submissive to his master and by doing that the slave will have no desire to run away if the white man attempts to oppose the deity's will by trying to make the Negro anything else than the submissive knee bender, which the Almighty declared he should be, by trying to raise him to a level with himself, or by putting himself on an equality with the Negro, or if he abuses the power which God has given to him over his fellow man by being cruel to him, or punishing him in anger, or in this sounds an awful lot like Romans 13, but anyway, so it, it, it so it's no, saying not it's, to do that. It, it, it's kind of the same spirit, though. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, but 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 Cartwright described the disorder, which he said was unknown to our medical authorities, although his diagnostic symptom and the abs- absconding from service is well known to our planters and overseers. In a in a paper delivered before the Medical Association of Louisiana that was widely reprinted, he stated that the malady was a consequence of masters who made themselves too familiar with slaves, treating them as equals. Now prevention and remedy this this is the important part this is the important part I, pay attention in addition to identifying drapetomania cartwright prescribed a remedy his feeling that with proper medical advice strictly followed this troublesome practice that many negroes have of running away can almost entirely can be almost entirely prevented in the case of slaves sulky and dissatisfied without cause a warning sign of imminent flight Cartwright prescribed whipping the devil out of them as a preventative measure. As a remedy for this disease, doctors also made running a physical impossibility by removing both of the big toes. That's That will hobble you. That will... Uh, <laughs> that will put you down. That will make you unable to too quickly run away so so in other words you put them on a on uh what's the word what's the word that they use a uh prohibited they became one of the prohibited and so you had to you had to do what you had to do so instead of cutting off your toe we're just going to take away your your means of self-defense so this is i mean this is uh i want to read this this is from ephesians chapter six Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And now here's here's the next part. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism in him, so or with him. So that's the part that they leave out. So Paul describes slaves being obedient for a purpose, to demonstrate the grace and the love of Christ. But then he assigns the same task to the masters. And if the masters actually followed the same rules, if they loved as Christ loved, guess what? They can't have slaves. But they omit that part. They just focus on the first part. They don't focus on the second part. And what this is, and we're going to talk about this later tonight, this is uh, they, they, they found something useful. They found it very useful First off, for the labor, and second off, to keep this this big population that they brought over here and they let populate to keep them in their place so that they couldn't compete. They they had a preference, uh, a raw, brutal preference to make sure that a certain group of people didn't escape the box that they had found themselves in. But they had these ideals. They had this an American identity, this individualism and liberty and Christian charity and all this American identity of the day. And so rather than following the American identity or, or even losing the American identity, they created uh, gymnastic judo with words to avoid facing the reality of their brutal preferences which was i don't care liberty for me but not for thee but i can't say that i have to try to justify it so i'm going to you know that's where you had the science emerge where blacks were not real people and then you had the christian argument why it is that slaves are justified rather than facing their their naked truth they hid behind ghosts behind ideals and false moralities that gave him a place to make these bad decisions and not face the, the, the beast within them. Is that a good explanation? 
Yes, anybody can find a reason to justify bad behavior if they want it enough. By right. the way, did did God ever hold a press conference and say, all right, you know what, maybe the slavery thing wasn't too good, or I let it go on for a while because it was necessary. You, you know, you dumbasses couldn't pull it together, but <laughs> now it's time to stop. No. Did that ever happen? No. Okay, so... When when these abolitionists got out there and ended slavery, they were going against God's will? No. What is God's will? Oh, heck, I know. I'm an atheist. I mean, is, <laughs> is it God's will to have slaves, or is, or is it, it God's will that they stay obedient? Obedient to who, ultimately? To who? To God. To their masters, right? Ultimately, to God. It's it's Whatever. it's about demonstrating the grace of God. Now the massa. Uh, you know I'm going to do a sto- a show someday. I have a I have a show outlined. It's going to be one of my Arc logo shows, and it's it's going to be about the the difficulty uh, in understanding words on paper. So. You look at the Bible, for instance, and there's a lot of issues with the Bible I don't even understand. And there are parts that are kind of contradictory. And and I think one of the problems with the Bible is it's written in a human language. You just, you can't. If you don't pick that cotton mass to turn you into a pillar of salt. There's so many ways to read Scripture. (laughs) So, and and that's because there's so many ways to read Scripture. Almost everything. You can twist every single word. This is why the Constitution is a mirage, because it's the just a bunch of, the, of words on paper. The, the myth of the rule of law. Now, right. personally, when, when it comes to religion, I do believe that man created God in his own image. Right. I don't. But, yeah. You could be right. I don't think you are. I, I feel pretty secure that you're not. Well, yeah, I feel pretty secure that you're not, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't have 100% certainty. I don't think, I don't know what I do have 100% certainty in. I don't you even have 100% har- certainty that I exist. You believe harder than most. Do I? Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Some people vote hard. You believe hard. Thank you. And And, and I can assure you that you do exist. You know how I know that you exist? How? Because I have seen you eat pan-fried bacon. And this is love a lie. <laughs> well, no, it's not a lie that I have eaten pan-fried bacon. I have. It's and a lie it. that that's proof and that I it. exist. You and your and eyes loved it. I did. I did love it. Did I love it as much as baked bacon? No, but I did love it. It was like baked bacon was a ten, and this was a nine. And and honestly, as pan-fried bacon goes, wow. Totally superior, way better if, than if, than if most. If you love bake, if you love baked bacon more than you love that bacon, the 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 skillet fried bacon, then your love of baked bacon could possibly get you on a sex offender list. Now, see, Lou is an atheist, or would are, would you say atheist, agnostic? I don't want to label you, but and I'm a Christian, I'm, and we can coexist. But when it comes to the fried. And the baked bacon part, that's a lot trickier. That's... Yes. I will I will declare a fatwa calling for your head for baking <laughs> bacon. <laughs> and I'll do the same. Uh, I, I will allow a certain dispensation if I am at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest and this is the only bacon that I have available to me. I will allow for its existence, but if the choice... If there are people available who are baking their bacon, then the fat wall comes back into being. It's <laughs> it's it's all a matter of perspective. Are you are you ready to go to off the leash? Because I got an interesting skill at Akbar, skill at Akbar, skill at Akbar. <laughs> We're probably not going to get to the ponder part of the story, but that so, but that's okay. I do want to get most of the show. Huh? What's that? that's been most of the show? No, we're still in longer leash. But we've but we've been pondering the whole time. Well, everything we do is pondering. We're all about the ponders. Wow. Uh, Jacob's cast iron skillet is literally sobbing. You know how to make that cast iron skillet happy? Put bacon in the skillet. Put the skillet with the bacon in it in the oven. Then you get the best of all of it. And now 
We're going to enter off the leash. How are others enjoying lives that exist beyond the reach of the leash of the state, the government, the course of enterprise, the course of association? How, in other words, are people living off the leash and how might you join them? And that was my daughter. That was the bug. Wonder bug. Do you have the story up? Intentional Florida community aims to go off grid. Now, this is off the leash, but it is a little bit of a... They're kind of snagged a bit, but they're working on on moving off the leash. So this is a story of Babcock Ranch in Florida. And Babcock Ranch is attempting to build a community that is completely off the grid. And uh, it's, it's more than a dream. It actually has like buildings and stuff. And they're actually people living there already. Uh, it was started by a football player. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about the football player, uh, but uh, his name is Sid Kitson, and they call him an NFL lineman. They don't even say was he a defensive lineman, offensive lineman. I don't know. Sid Kitson. So the NFL lineman Sid Kitson made millions of dollars and whatever, and decided to build this community. So, uh, uh, and and go to the show notes because I strongly recommend that. I only take an excerpt from the article, but really, this whole article is definitely worth a read. The guy is, a long time ago, back in 2003, I had this idea of creating something that I called the Novus Now Village. Novus Now means new now. And uh, the idea was that the Novus Now Village would be a laboratory to test the cutting-edge technologies that would enable people to be self-sustaining, self-reliant, independent. And I wasn't concerned. Now, I think this guy's more concerned about saving the planet. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm all for saving the planet, but that wasn't my core motivation. My core motivation, even back in 2003, was I wanted to see people have the power to say no. That was my big thing, to have the power to say no. And the way that you have the power to say no is is in one way is that you're not dependent. When you're dependent on a system, it's hard to say no to it. So this guy's actually doing it. He's created what I had in my head. Not exactly, but but yeah, it's 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 a whole community where he's testing out he's testing out things like uh, autonomous vehicles that uh, help reduce the traffic. Uh, something called Transdev. Uh, and his biggest problem, by the way, in his effort to go off the leash, is he he can't he can't because it's against the law in Florida for your home to be completely untethered from their power grid, and he's fighting it and he's trying to figure a way around it. And that that that's his biggest impediment. But he's out there, and this is a guy. I don't know. Is he an anarchist? He's a libertarian. I don't. I don't know. But but he's building a reality that shows that there are alternatives to the course of enterprise model. He's living it, whether he knows it or not. At some level, it has to be getting in his head, and getting in the heads of the people who will experience this. It's like technology can change you the way that you live can change the the way that you think it's like you know the 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 egyptians they were there let's just say their religion their they were a little bit more they had a a stable worldview they had a kind of a hopeful worldview they had a lot of uh predictability with the nile everything came almost I mean, there were some anomalies, but everything came with almost regularity and things were plentiful. And then you had the Sumerians and they have somewhat of a, a, a darker, brutal religion. And uh, it's not a coincidence because they lived their 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 rivers were changing more. They didn't have the reliable patterns. They lived closer to the bone. It was a lot harder life. And. So their worldview was affected by that. So when people experience something like uh, an environment where they see free associations, uh, voluntary governance, if you will, 
uh, self-reliance, self-sustainability, it tends to change the way they look at things. They, the things that they once accepted, they're not going to accept anymore. You, you following me? Oh, definitely. Definitely. It's what, well, well, no, I don't completely follow you because you went off on a, like a big junk, big long giant <laughs> rant and said a lot of the things that I wanted to say. Oh, I'm sorry. So, I apologize. Yeah. I'm going to fall on my well, sword now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and it, it, it's really amazing when you hear all the discussion about, oh, we have to have sustainability, we have to have this, we have to have that, and we, we need people to use alternative energies. Nope, not your own. We need right. people to, to embrace solar and wind. Nope, not your own. We need right. people to you we need people to use these other things. We need people to come up with these ideas to 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 make the world a whole lot better. Nope, not that idea. Cause you gotta get it from this guy over here. And it's 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 well, one, it just shows that it's, it, that it's completely senseless and it's just platitudes. Uh, I, I, I've, I've been thinking a, a bit about back when I used to dabble in politics, and one of the conclusions I drew from that, uh, when uh, when you have a candidate, all right, so the candidate has to get people to have an issue. He needs to find what issue is important to them, even if he has to create that issue, even if it's a stupid issue, even if it's an issue that's never going to come to fruition – even if it's completely 100% detrimental to the person that's holding that issue and the rest of the world, just so long as that person has an issue that can be capitalized upon, then that's what the candidate is going to push for. Because it serves his best interest. Yes. Right. And you're right. I mean, this is something I noticed back in 2003. Self-sustainability, self-reliance, uh these are words that are used in a global sense, in a larger community sense. They're not often used in the individual free association sense. We must be self-reliant. Not you. Mm -hmm. We right. must be self-reliant. So instead of developing technologies that enable you to have power, this is what I want to work on, uh, in, uh, to have the power to create in your own home. Instead of building a home solar system, they're concentrating on solar farms, wind farms, giant collectives. That's their idea of green. I don't, and I reject all that. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't want, I always, I, I used to have a saying, I haven't said it in a while, but I don't remember if it exactly, but in essence, uh, wherever possible, always choose the smaller scale. I won't say always, but almost always. I think I used to say always, but now I try to avoid the word always. Wherever possible, avoid this, you know, always choose the smaller scale. That's that's the best path. That's the best route. And when you see self-sustainability and they're talking about large-scale systems, no. No, they're not talking about self-sustainability. They're talking about ways to control and manage you and to, again, kind of like the you know, justification of slaves to create this ideological mythology that gives them, even even for them, gives them a little comfort that, you know, they're not doing brutal things. They're not really destroying the lives of people and totally manipulating them and preventing them from reaching their fullest potential. They're just, you know, they're just, they're just helping to save the planet. So it's okay. Yep. Okay. I th I think because uh, one of the things that well you don't hear so much out of Democrats uh, you hear it a bit out of Republicans is the lip service of entrepreneurship and small small business and when you have people going out and showing initiative even if it's not for a small business uh, even if it's not for entrepreneurial purposes. Uh, it, it has a tendency to get stepped on all over the place, uh, particularly if you don't have all the licenses and permits. Uh, as an example, you look at these kids, uh, they get shut down for shoveling sidewalks or cutting grass in the summertime or opening up a lemonade stand. And, and, the, and the cops will come over and say, you know, thou shalt not engage in, in buying and selling unless I takes the mark of the beast. 
Yeah. Meaning the lic- meaning the government licenses and permits. I think you did a show recently where you were talking about that the how licensing is the mark of the beast and <laughs> yes. metaphorically, but yeah, I agree with you. Licensing is the the, the mark of the beast. I have a f- you, you can't buy and sell without that mark. I have a friend that runs a, a convenience store and all oh, he tells me horrible stories that I mean there's so many regulations that he has to follow. And then every year there's new ones and they change and he spends a good percentage of his, of his resources just trying to keep up with the regulations that are always changing. And that, by the way, that dries up his cost. So guess who gets to pay that cost? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you don't follow the rules for how you use your property, I mean, you, you probably should get, you probably should get, uh, abused and beat up and everything else. And because, tie, go because God commands the slaves to be obedient to their masters. Oh, we're getting their back earthly, to that. <laughs> their earthly masters. Everything comes back to everything. Okay, it everything always, comes back it to always, everything. It always well, goes in a circle, jerk. It does. Uh, Ty said people should stick with homestead style of grid living. Hook up your own energy for your home. Yeah, that's exactly that's 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 what I want to see develop. I want to see. I'm 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 okay with you know pulling your resources, and I know you are tied too, but to a certain degree, pulling your resources in a voluntary free association capacity because sometimes that is more effective. But you 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 still have to have like we have a we have a storm rolling in tonight tomorrow i could experience power losses sometime tomorrow and i happen to be somewhat prepared for that possibility i can be self-reliant and self-sustaining during that period of time because i have my own source of power i think i think that's the end of our show what do you think okay sounds good we've reached the, the the hour mark we've been on we've been on air for a full hour and we didn't get to the ponder the last part, but that's okay. That's fine. We did. Yes, get we to... did. We we pondered most of the show. <laughs> well, we didn't get to the one that I planned on, which was we were gonna we were gonna talk about the news and uh, what are some of the things that you want to look for. Maybe we'll save it for next week. Maybe who knows? Plan plan pondering is overrated. Plan pondering is eh, you can set guides, you know. But I I plan and I'm flexible. Like, you know, you plan and you accept that your plan might totally change because I believe in uh, spontaneous order as well. So, yeah, I'm not rigid in my planning. Planning is good, but just don't get rigid about it. And with that note, let me say uh, I will not be back on any shows until Monday. I'll be doing headlines you may have missed on my personal Facebook personal Facebook page, uh, uh, the Paul Gordon uh, Facebook page. Headlines you may have missed, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, with uh, Professor Rambo, we are going to be doing a show that the title is Why Does the FBI Hate the Cops? It's going to be a very interesting show. Hope I don't trigger anybody, but I might. Oh, Ty likes your plan pondering, by the way. And where will you be next? What, 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 where, where are you, are you doing any comedy clubs this week? Who, me? No, no. I'm, I'm enjoying some much needed time off of not doing a whole heck of a lot. Actually, actually I have some uh, secret plans that are, they're being hatched. I think I know some Uh, of them. You do know some of them. But I'm not saying anything. And I haven't said anything. Nope, I'm, you haven't. And you loose, won't. Loose lips sink ships. I don't want to sink yep. loose ships. That would be terrible. <laughs> yeah, don't sink loose ships. <laughs> right. Uh, so when, when, when are you on the Freedom Fiends next? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So there you go. You will be on the Freedom Fiends. When that is, we'll find out. And when we know, Sooner we'll let you know. Or later. Sooner. Sooner or later. How about that? Sooner or later. So thank yeah. you, everybody who joined us here today. Uh, 
If anybody shared, I think I got one share. Dude, did only one person share? You people are terrible. You need to share this show. People, children will, I won't say that. I was going to say children will die, but that seems a little low, over the top. A little OTT. Uh, but children will cry. Children will cry. Uh, and Paul Sin says, uh, soon, trademark. trademark. Hashtag trademark is, is what I usually say. Uh, but anyway, thank you all for joining us. I will see you guys uh, next this this Monday for both headlines you may have missed and is daily Monday and Lou and I we are scheduled and we should be back next week for another edition of is daily Thursday good night everybody good night <laughs>